Hey, hello, my name is Jordan Brown, and we're here in Gainesville, Florida, right outside the city limits. And the name of my farm is The Family Garden. I think for us, the biggest pest problem is uh, fungus. You know, I mean, the downy mildew is one that really comes to mind. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a host of problems, but being in Florida, we can have fungus even in the middle of winter time. There's funguses that can kill your plants. Worms, you know, caterpillar larvae can be, can be bad as a pest, but I think overall the, um, the fungus, there's, you know, different plants have different funguses that attack them. And being in a, a humid environment, you know, there's fungus that lives in a cool, humid environment and a, a warm, humid environment, and that's, that's one of the biggest challenges, I feel like. Knowing what to plant and when to plant it goes a long way to uh, being able to manage both disease and pests and weeds. The, um, we try to use modern hybrid varieties of most things. You know, one, of the, one of the main things I look for is disease resistance. When I'm going to go select a variety of, of water, whatever it is. And there's a handful of things that we found to be effective, but there's no, there's no effective fungicide like with conventional farming. There's no you know, when you read organic gardening books, most of it was written for either for the West or for the uh, for the Northeast, and there's a whole bunch of home remedies. And it's funny you go to like a farmer's market, and people ask you, "Oh, do you, you know, do you mix up tobacco juice and spray it on your stuff?" And you know, maybe that works, but it ain't gonna work here. So there's a handful of things that we use, and there's a whole lot of stuff out there that doesn't work. There's a whole lot of stuff that you could spend a lot of money on that doesn't do anything. You're just, you know, paying money for some goo and you dump it in your sprayer and spray it out. But we spray when we need to and uh, see what comes out. My name is Tony Potenza. Uh, my farm is called Potenza Organic Farms. I'm located in Trumansburg, New York, in the heart of the Finger Lakes my weed management. Uh, I'll talk about cos uh, mustard. Uh, I grow uh, barley, which I didn't mention, uh, spring barley. And I'll go into a field and plant the barley and I'll have a beautiful green field of barley. And three or four weeks later, the field turns yellow. And I have volunteer mustard and mustard that I've actually planted in the past, uh, culinary mustard, uh, that would come on. The mustard is a 45, 60 day crop. Uh, the barley is a 100, 110 day crop. The mustard comes on, uh, matures, dries off, it disappears, except for the seed. The barley comes on and does uh, well. It doesn't compete. The only competition we have is for moisture. And we usually don't have a problem with lack of moisture in spring grains. And of late, it's been the other way around, too much moisture. So when we harvest the barley, we harvest the mustard also. I, uh, before I put it in the bin, I cage clean the mustard out. And I sell the mustard seed and I sell the barley. I get more for the mustard seed than the barley. And I do have uh, a weed presence of mustard in some fields. Uh, my tillage uh, practice and weed control is basically a stale seed bed uh, technique. I'll go th through and get a field ready to plant and delay planting and then shallow cultivate tying harrow plant and then the row crops uh, i'll go in with a tying harrow and then it's row crop cultivating my name is gene hediger and this is my son i'm bryce hediger uh, i do the marketing of the crops from our family farm and Bryce along with my husband and his dad do the uh, growing. They are the farmers, I am the seller. Fortunately, we're not plagued too bad by pests, which knock on wood, 
But hands down, our biggest pest problem is perennial weeds. Yeah. That being bindweed and then skeleton leaf burr sage, I think is the, the name. And the problem with these are, well, bindweed, for example, which is well known, has such an extensive root system and is such a strong competitor that you know, it'll be like 40 bushel wheat, 40 bushel wheat, two bushel wheat, 40 bushel wheat. Yeah. And I think that's a big barrier a lot of conventional farmers have coming into this is that it's a very hard on everyone to see, you know, a bad spot like that. And especially those of us who own the acreage. <laughs> yeah, especially those of us that own the acreage. You know, and it looks bad from the road and it's kind of a perception thing too. When you're looking out across the field, you're like, wow, that's a lot of bindweed, but we've been doing some satellite imagery and drone work. And when you look down on it and actually have it mapped out as a percentage, you know, you're talking about 3%, 4%, 5%, which would be way out of the lines of tolerance of a conventional farmer. But going back to what we were talking about earlier is, well, two bushel, $2 a bushel conventional wheat versus $10 a bushel organic wheat. And obviously we're not having a five time factor of bad weeds, but we have a, a higher tolerance for it, I guess you could say. And we've done, again, with the, the cost benefit that organic's given us, we've gone down a lot of different roads. Uh, we've messed with spraying vinegar, We've messed with gypsum. We've mess, mess, you know, X, Y, and Z. Moldboard plowing it under, you know, trying to bias times. It's all this stuff. Uh, the, the task I'm doing this year, which has certainly been thought of by someone, but it's, it's good to find things out yourself. I'm doing soil samples inside a bindweed patch and then soil samples about five feet around the perimeter. And I'm having the soil samples done on a much higher level than normal. And I'm seeing how we're structurally changing the soil from minerals and I'm seeing you know, if I flood this with certain minerals, can I do this? Because while we have a high gross, it's not like we're covering every acre. When you have 2% of your farm, you can actually afford to put a lot of money into only 2%. Uh, so like I said, I try to experiment with it every year. I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this, but hopefully I discover something new. We took some because we had a, quite a few acres come out for the CRP. And so we put more acres into production. We, were, we actually rotated some of our worst perennial weed acres out and uh, we'll have them out for three or four years to um, address the weeds. And so they're a conventional crop. And then we will introduce those back in as soon as we clear that out. So we also think it's important, just because we're committed organic farmers and we want 100% of our farm, we're also sustainable. We believe in sustainability. And so, you know, it's not sustainable to have 30% of your field in perennial weeds. My name is Malika Spencer. Uh, I am the owner and operator of Roots to River Farm in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and uh, with a location in Titusville, New Jersey. We've been operating this is going to be our fifth season. I'd say our biggest pest problem would be root maggots. You know, we have the usual flea beetles and things like that, um, but uh, we've, we've had some really bad wipeouts of, of our alliums. I'm not sh quite sure how to, you know, we've started covering our garlic, you can see, um, and, you know, we've, I want to try and keep on top of beneficial nematode applications. That's the only thing that um, I've been able to find that might, might help prevent that. Hi, my name is Brian England. I'm Landsman Manager here at Aurora Organic Dairy. Uh, today we are at our High Plains Complex in Gill, Colorado. For, for pest and weed pressure, um, the cattle and the grazing rotation, they help us take care of weeds and other, other pests in our alfalfa fields. Uh, alfalfa fields that we graze, we have very little uh, weevil, alfalfa weevil pressure. So the system works, works very well together. Crop rotation is, is very important, especially on our corn side. Uh, corn rootworm is probably our biggest uh, pest uh, when growing corn silage. So we just use a good, good crop rotation to help control that, which we have been very successful with. So for our, for our cropping fields, we'll rotate through, uh, through corn, uh, wheat, uh, sorghum silage, and then uh, back into alfalfa. We're also trying some soybeans this year to get a, another legume in the rotation that would just be an annual. So we hope to have good success with it. Some of our largest uh, production challenges on the cropping side would be, would be pest and weeds. Uh, We've been very successful using crop rotation to, to mitigate those. But at the same time, you can't always grow the crops that you would want to like you could in a, in a conventional setting where you can use the um, synthetic herbicides and pesticides to help control 
your pest. Uh, we've got to do that more natural way through crop rotations, which just uh, which does limit the the types you can types of crops you can grow year on year. Thank you.